Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Firebyte. Today we're going to be talking about APT Blocker, uh, which is, stands for Advanced Persistent Threat Blocker. And that part of that advanced per, um, threats are going to be a zero-day malware. You know, really these uh, items that are um, overwhelming traditional antivirus uh, engines as we know them today. So as we look at today's agenda, again, we're just going to keep it um, more on the tech level, um, but certainly around the 30-minute mark, we're going to cover um, why am I being targeted, what is APT blocker, then we're going to dive in, look at some examples, and then we're going to go over how to activate the free trial of APT blocker if you're not currently using it today, and then uh, set up APT blocker. So before we begin, if you've uh, joined us for our previous sessions, uh, through WatchGuard Dimension, I would really encourage you to set up Dimension prior to setting up APT Blocker because Dimension's where you're going to get all those email alerts from. You're going to get all those um, that visibility components if you recall some of those earlier uh, sessions on Dimension. So as we look at this, and I know um, and for some of you, you might have uh, heard me talking about APT Blocker, but it, going out to local trade shows, I'm uh, polling customers, and probably about six months ago, we used to see only about um, maybe 10% of people that have heard about crypto locker or crypto wall, some sort of ransomware or other um, item malware out there, um, and now we're seeing about 60%. In fact, I have uh, people coming up to me and asking me at trade shows, well, does uh, WatchGuard have an APT solution? So absolutely, we wanted to focus on what we're doing at uh, WatchGuard for advanced persistent threats. And ultimately, um, you know, starting out with the most basic um, of why am I being targeted? And we're not going to spend a lot of time on this because most of you are engineers on the phone and you realize um, why you're being uh, targeted. But again, just to cover some of these things, so, you know, we really started out with APTs more of a nation state. Um, now we see that uh, hackers are actually trying to make more money with um, targeting every mom and pop shop or every person. For instance, if they can send a file, trick you into clicking on it, um, which I have a number of stories about, um, one, my old boss came in one day and said, uh, I've got this UPS tracking, you click on it, it goes black, uh, black screen, and then comes back. I said, well, unfortunately, you probably just installed some sort of malware on your computer. So if a hacker can get you as a user to uh, click on a file, either through uh, you know, an enticing name or correlate it with events that are going on in the nation um, or in the news, then they're going to have more of a, um, a chance of infecting your computer. And then in the case of uh, ransomware, they're going to grab those files, encrypt them, and then hold them ransom for um, the last I've seen was two bitcoins um, because it's completely untraceable. So as we look at um, some other ways that uh, people are being targeted, we're looking at uh, zero-day exploits. We're looking at that evasive malware, CryptoLocker. Maybe it's a um, certificate, uh, a stolen certificate. Spear phishing is a big one because most of the time uh, users um, are susceptible to uh, relevant news stories and then criminal water and hole attacks. For instance, maybe I have a, a Drupal or a WordPress website or maybe a SSL uh, that now has a vulnerability how can I address those? And certainly WatchGuard has a, um, the security that you need uh, to protect your site. So the biggest issue, you know, people um, in conversations generally ask me, well, how is it that these antivirus engines still do not have a signature for this file? And truthfully, you know, as we talk about uh, crypto wall or APT blocker, from an engineer side, it's one of the most difficult things uh, to demonstrate, and we'll go over that today. But ultimately, let's say um, in a demonstration, I grab a file, run it through, make sure um, things are working, 
no, the next time I try to uh, submit that file, it's not blocked. So um, and part of that reason is uh, why we are seeing so many variations are, for instance, these uh, files are um, programs called PX Cryptor or FUD Cryptor or any number of Cryptor tools on the Internet. Um, this particular one was uh, uh, for charge, but essentially I would, if I grabbed a crypto locker a variation, and maybe there's an antivirus signature for that today, I can go ahead and browse, upload that file into this program, change the icon file name, maybe make it, um, you know, like a toll road or um, some other sort of uh, personality that users would uh, correlate to. And then I have these advanced uh, settings. Now, many of you that are familiar with, um, for instance, APT solutions out there, you know that we're running in a virtualized environment. Now, when we talk about anti-virtualization, we have the power at WatchGuard uh, leveraging our best of breed partner, Lastline out of California, who's been uh, doing this for years. We have the power to um, look at uh, this anti-virtualization and essentially um, take away any sort of uh, cloak and dagger or cloak that uh, this uh, malware is doing because we're able to look at the CPU level, um, the system calls, rather than having, for instance, the agent in the system bar of a virtual client um, in which we would lose integrity. We're also able to look at um, sandboxing, anti-sandboxing technology, and circumvent, uh, for instance, these cloaks as well. One of the ways that um, attackers are uh, getting files through is essentially these files are laying dormant. They're saying, okay, after five minutes, we're going to start up because we've run all of our uh, system checks in there. With last time, what we're able to do because of that virtual environment and we're running at the um, CPU, just like we would be doing with a port mirroring mode on a switch, we're running essentially a CPU mirror mode. So what we're able to do is um, quite fascinating, actually, is we're able to speed up or slow down time, but most importantly, is speed up time to jump ahead five minutes, ten minutes, even eight hours, so that we're able to see that um, virus or malware come to life and then um, find out what it's doing at that point. Now, what is APT Blocker? Again, that's uh, from Last Line out of California. And it's um, a couple of key things here. It's going to identify and submit suspicious files to cloud-based uh, next-gen pool system emulation. What does that really mean? We'll get into that, um, showing you that uh, in a few minutes here. It's going to provide real-time threat visibility, protection in minutes and not hours. We're going to analyze a comprehensive set of files, which is executables, Office documents, PDFs, Android APKs. Now, the important thing with Android APKs, and I apologize if you've heard this from me before, but as we talk about um, uh, Google Play Store versus the uh, Apple um, Store for iPhone, Android, or sorry, iPhone, iPad, the important thing to note is that Apple has a, generally a more secure channel unless you jailbreak. They're locking you into that app store. Now, a lot of you that are Android users don't like Apple for that reason. And this isn't necessarily a debate of Apple versus Android, but as we look at, for instance, the Android topology, I could get um, any app. So let's say, for instance, um, my children, they love Angry Birds, right? So I could go out, look for Angry Birds. Now there's going to be a free version or a 99 cent version, what have you. And most users are going to choose the free version. Now, um, today they are, you know, the free legitimate um, versions are riddled with ads, so we can generally deal with those. But what I could do as a hacker is take, for instance, um, buy that Angry Birds for 99 cents open it up and put in a key logger on your Android phone or your Android tablet so that if there's any pictures, any text, um, I could grab copies of those and simply do a key logger of all your information that you're putting in your mobile handheld. So that's why the Android APKs are so important. As we look at PDFs or 
uh, micro um, Microsoft documents running those macros in Excel, we're going to be able to detect all of those and analyze that in that environment. We're going to be able to detect a zero-day malware. Um, as we look at that, we're going to uh, and we'll walk through that process of how it uh, runs through your system. And then again, we're not being fooled by evasion because we are running a CPU um, level of uh, monitoring on there. And as I mentioned, one of the hardest things about APT um, from a demo standpoint, and certainly if you're engineers out there trying to establish value, I can help you out with that. But um, it, it certainly is difficult. So a lot of them that we see are actually uh, screenshots on this. So I wanted to go spend a few minutes why watch our APT solution. So if you are keeping up with the news, you know that uh, a number of other security firewalls, other security vendors are actually signing up with a laugh line because they are really the leader in uh, what they're doing. Now, as a watch card customer, that's actually great news as well because rather than just a sample of maybe um, watch card customers, so you have a, a couple hundred thousand users in the world, we now are adding on to that sample pool. So now, rather than just being one, and um, uh, you know, if we take the simple ratios, if I'm one of ten users chances are that I'm going to get attacked or um, increase exponentially. Now, in the world of uh, security, if I take that and I'm one of one million, then my um, odds of being uh, being attacked are uh, minimal. So if, as we look at WatchGuard's APT solution, one of the biggest uh, differentiators between that or in some of our um, partner or our competitors trying to do APT in-house with some of their solutions is we have results in 50, under 15 seconds. So as we look at this, again, this is just from our log viewer. I submitted at around 11.08 um, in here. We see HTTP file submitted to APT analysis uh, server. Um, as we look at that, I'll show you how to monitor that through um, your uh, some of your tools that WatchGuard provides you. And then within um, under 15 seconds, here we go, we have APT threat notified, um, a low APT threat. At this point, as a system administrator, you would have received an email. Um, so again, that speed of being able to uh, find out what that file is doing, analyze that file, and deliver those results back. Again, we're giving you that visibility and management through one pane of glass, either that's um, the visibility through a Firebox system manager or uh, WatchGuard Dimension, which we'll cover as well on uh, seeking those threats. So that's a submission example. Now as we look at the actual process of what's happening behind the scenes, uh, let's talk about that for a few minutes. So as you look at the APT blocker, one of the criteria that um, you need let's say you're a reseller or you want to uh, install or you want to um, purchase the APT subscription, the precursor to run an APT blocker is that you have to have a, um, the antivirus subscription because a lot of those, whether it's the Coca-Cola greeting cards that we saw um, a couple of years back or the, I think it was the Santa Claus eight years back that was just sending out mass emails to thousands of users, we are keeping our um, speed and efficiency down with um, APT blocker by running those files first through antivirus. So whether it's a signature um, that we have, that a file that's out there for years, we're going to be able to um, just stop that, curtail that threat immediately. So once it's passed, let's say it is an advanced or a zero-day um, malware, it gets past the antivirus engine. Now we're going to hit APT blocker. We're going to take that file, and we have a, actually a um, we grab MD file MD5, excuse me, signature of that file. So within there, we have a local cache, a local database uh, that's stored on our um, watch card. So that let's say it's a um, tax refund, which is a, a sample um, that uh, we'll go over later on today. So let's say a tax refund. And this just happened today where 
I, um, I downloaded it, and so now that's sitting in my local um, cache of my uh, firewall. So next time I download it, I'm going to get it immediately uh, blocked from downloading that again. Now, if it wasn't in my local Fireboxes uh, cache or database, it, it sits in the remote um, cache or database at last line. So again, this is just a file that we know that we don't we've already analyzed in the past, we don't need to run that analysis again because we already know about that MD5 signature. Now, for some reason, we take the MD5, we don't find it in the local or remote cache. This is where we actually upload it into um, the last line virtual environment. And then we look at the um, analysis on the uh, programs, the operating system, the CPU level, once we determine that that uh, thread is either a low on up through a high, now we're able to redistribute that uh, signature uh, through the remote cache as well as the um, pull down to the local cache if need be. So a sample of that, and this was actually a real life um, a file that tried to come through. Now, as I've mentioned uh, before, many of you that know me, I do spend a fair amount of time traveling. Now, as we look at this email and we look at some of the details of this email, it might not be that strange uh, if I were to see an email from American Airlines. Uh, now, because I'm in the Northwest, it's, I did travel Alaska quite a bit. But let's say I did travel American Airlines and I uh, got an email, received an email. It said your order is processed. Again, for some of you that don't travel, maybe that would be more suspicious. But um, for myself, maybe they had done their research and found out that I, wanted, that I did travel, and let's say this um, attacker even knew that I worked for WatchGuard and they wanted to um, send, send me a file in hopes that I would open it and provide them with a tiny window into a WatchGuard, um, into their security by um, simply using me as a chain of trust. So as we look at this, we see an order is processed. Fortunately, I had APT blocker. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it was actually in a zip file. So many of you are aware, uh, but for those of you that aren't aware, we're going to look in zips, RARs, any uh, compressed file, look inside that file and um, or that zip, extract it, and then analyze that file here. So again, this was um, AA and then a series of numbers, a zip. Fortunately, WatchGuard was able to uh, remove that and uh, send me an email notification so that um, I'm aware that uh, I was being protected. And again, this was in September of uh, 2014. Now, as we look at a more recent example, I just, as I mentioned, from an engineer standpoint, it's very difficult to, um, to get a file in zero-day malware and to have it uh, be submitted to LastLine for that analysis. However, uh, this was a file that I um, had actually grabbed a while ago, stuck it onto my private website, and um, I wanted to rerun the analysis of that. So it was out of my local cache, um, had expired. So as we look at this, uh, we see that I did receive an email notification now. For those of you that want email notifications, just be aware that you need to have uh, WatchGuard Dimension and set up that email alert logging, um, which I have uh, covered under previous um, series as well. So if you have questions on that, feel free to reach out and I will uh, direct you through the right resources. But in this case, I'm running behind a, um, M400, the latest and greatest 64-bit uh, firewalls from WatchGuard running the Intel Quick Assist chips. Uh, phenomenal technology. Um, so as we look at this, we're seeing APT threat detected, source IP, destination, uh, proxy host, so, and then the file. So as I mentioned, tax refund, right? This was a file that I had um, seen in the wild right after tax season, April 15th. It was around, and people were trying to, or hackers were trying to get people to click on a tax refund uh, within that. And, it is a doc, but there was a, some sort of, um, and we can go into those details as well. So from there, um, this was an actual, I had to grab a screenshot really quick on my Firebox system manager. 
because as I mentioned, um, this is really a one-time shot of being able to grab these files. But we can see here um, May 15th, 8 o'clock this morning, I, I submitted a file to analysis, to APT analysis server. I got the results back, um, and then it sent an email out uh, with that notification uh, there. And I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to be able to do that as well. So as we look at um, the one thing I did want to cover here is how to be able to get your, um, uh, your trial key. So the first thing you want to do is log into your WatchGuard uh, Support Center. Uh, you can go into Manage My Products. I have a fair amount of products, as you might imagine, from WatchGuard, so I just went ahead and um, grabbed the one here. We have Bloomheart T10W. This one is the one that I take with me on um, on the road. Actually, I just got this guy here. We can see that it doesn't have an APT subscription. Uh, this one is, um, you know, for those that travel, this one's set up as a branch office VPN. I plug it into a hotel network or I join it onto a, um, a Wi-Fi network, which uh, if you haven't seen, very cool. You can take the wireless of the T10 and join it right to that um, uh, hotel wireless network, and uh, it syncs up that uh, branch office VPN to my office so that it's as I'm working from my office. Very uh, slick, and that's through the dynamic uh, branch office VPN. Let me know if you're interested in finding out more about that. But in this particular case, I just got this new uh, T10W. And go ahead and just click on under advanced persistent threat. And again, if you have just purchased the live security and you don't have any of these, you can do the, run these trials for any one of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on free trial here for APT. And it should, um, maybe it's been sitting there for too long. But what it's going to do is give me a feature key that now I can take in um, to, let me just go ahead and refresh my session here. There we go. We can take a feature key um, and grab it. And it seems like I have a number of uh, APT blockers available here. I'm just going to go ahead. Obviously, something wasn't quite right. Let's go back under Manage My Products. Oh, and that's why it threw me out of my session. So bear with me one second here. I'm going to go ahead and log into um, my uh, portal, go into Manage My Products from here. And as I mentioned, I'm going to grab that feature key and update my device with that. Click on search to find that product. If I knew the serial number, I could go ahead and um, just enter that uh, there as well. I'm going to go in under uh, my T10W. Now, the great thing about, um, as we talk about feature keys, one of the um, incredible things about WatchGuard is being able to grab that config, throw it on from one device to the other device, and that feature key is independent. Some of our competitors, they um, loop in or they bundle all of that so you can't grab that config and change it. Um, with WatchGuard, we make it incredibly easy to um, change from one device to another. So again, I'm just going to go under a free trial here for APT. Looks a lot better this time. I'm going to go ahead and throw on uh, my data loss prevention as well. You could do that on yours. Select next on there. I'm going to um, accept the EULA, click on next, and then ultimately grab that feature key. Um, while that's working, I'm going to show you uh, this is my T10W. I can go under subscription services. We see here. Um, or we don't see the panes here for those uh, sec sec um, security subscriptions. We have under uh, subscription services, your feature key does not allow this feature to be enabled. So I'm just going to go ahead and get to the place where I'm going to go um, under feature key. And now I could automatically synchronize my feature key with WatchGuard uh, simply by clicking enable automatic feature key synchronization, or I could download it. But in this case, I just want to show you um, how I can grab that feature key. And again, that's just a text, um, a plain text file. And I'm just going to come over here and click on Update Feature Key and just paste the um, feature key. 
It says the changes were uh, successfully applied. And now under here, we should see APT blocker enabled, and it's going to expire in 30 days from here. So now the next step is just go under subscription services, go to APT blocker. And again, this is the web UI management side of WatchGuard. We also have policy manager as well. I'm just going to go ahead and click on enable APT blocker. I'm going to say anything from low to high threat. We want to go ahead and drop. Now, if we wanted to, we could also alarm uh, those threats as well. And as we talk about alarming, many of you do realize or are aware that WatchGuard has under notification. We can say send notification via email. If it was pop-up window, this would be on the WatchGuard system or a server center, uh, wherever that um, software was installed. Certainly, if you wanted to send an SM, SNMP trap, you could do that as well. But in this case, I just want to be notified via email um, that I had a threat going on. I could click on policy, enable, um, or select the HTTP proxy policy that I want to enable on, and click on enable. Save that configuration. And it's that easy to um, set up an APT blocker. Now, as we talk about the value of APT blocker, I just wanted to show you as well. So I'm in a Firebox system manager. Many of you are aware of um, this tool. And there are a number of things under traffic management, or uh, excuse me, under traffic monitor to make your life a little easier as a system administrator. Some of the tips and tricks under file settings I like to share with people is that you can increase your log messages. Certainly, you know, if this is uh, 25,000, if it's a production environment, um, that is a little bit more resource intensive. But if you wanted to uh, simply look at a uh, testing environment, you can increase that. The other thing I'd like to encourage people um, to click on is this show log, log field names options here. Now, if you don't have that, you know as a, um, system administrator, you would just see the uh, IPs in there. You wouldn't necessarily know if it was a source or destination. So by showing those um, extra settings, the uh, uh, log field names, we're able to get a little more uh, details on that. So for APT, there's a number of uh, trigger fields that you can type in in here. Um, APT gives us that uh, just APT activity. We see here that email came through that we've submitted to APT analysis. As we look at uh, what that actually was, we can look at, um, we see here a requirement uh, PDF under there. So again, we're, anal we're um, taking that file, uh, looking at that threat before it's um, being delivered. Uh, we're just mon uh, monitoring that. Now, if you're um, interested in for instance, some of those other key triggers, you could type in Ike, which would be all of your branch office, um, or Ike D, apologies, um, all your branch office VPN traffic in there. And there's certainly some other um, trigger fields that we'll cover under uh, future Firebytes as well. But under, um, if we look at, uh, for instance, subscription services, this is just a great way to find out how many uh, threats APT blocker. So we've had five threats here. Um, notified objects on two of those. So again, just a great way to find out what it's doing on our network. Now, as I mentioned, I had grabbed a copy of that tax refund doc, um, put it, stored it away on my a little private website, and that was, um, my apologies, that was in February of 2015, February 20 of 2015. Now, as we look at that file, and, um, I just uploaded it to last line for analysis um, right now. The interesting thing is, um, as we look at that uh, history of that, we look at the virus total link report. So again, this was February of 2015, which you would think that many of these uh, antivirus engines would be create a signature for. We see here ABG um, grabbed a signature for that. But look at all of these antivirus engines that still do not have a signature for that. Um, that uh, file, that tax refund. So again, as we talk about, you know, some of these um, uh, security vendors that have antivirus solutions, again, some of them are very slow to be able to create these uh, signatures and because they are 
get it inundated with all these files that are out there. So again, just a phenomenal way to be able to protect your um, network, your environment, your users um, from these advanced or zero-day malware uh, threats in there. So with that, I'll wrap it up. I did want to, um, just like we've done with other sessions, did want to include the next Firebyte session is on uh, Friday, June 26th. And that is in, um, going in a direction of integrating Active Directory. Now, one of the biggest um, questions I hear is, how do we as associate IPs to usernames? And this is part of the process. So we're going to first talk about integrating Active Directory. Then we're going to go into the, um, some of the features of a single sign-on and definitely cover that. But uh, just like always, this session is being recorded. You can grab that recording on uh, through our YouTube channel. You can definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel to get any updated videos that we have. And if you have any future topics or any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, there's my email address right there, and I'll definitely be able to address that um, as well. Uh, so with that, I did want to thank you for joining us for another Firebyte session. Hopefully this was um, uh, beneficial for you. I did see that we have a couple of questions. Unfortunately, with our time, I'm going to have to address those um, on a uh, per email basis, so look for my responses. Um, but certainly, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on uh, June 26th. Take care.